Hey guys, today we're gonna install a beam. We're gonna take out a load bearing wall, install a support beam, and create a nice transition from the kitchen, dining room, into the family room, an open concept. So come on, it'll be a fun day. All right, so first things first, guys. The goal here today is to take this wall down, right? This wall goes away. But in order to do that, there's weight from the existing, this is the second floor above us. So there's joists, these are floor joists, that are sitting on top of this existing wall. Okay, so we can't just take the wall down, because if we do that, then the floor above won't have any support, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create what we call a temporary shoring wall, or support wall. That'll allow us to temporarily kind of brace and hold the floor in place. How to do that, we're gonna put a top plate, a temporary top plate here. And then we're gonna put down here on the floor a temporary sill plate. From there, we'll measure, we'll tape in studs. We should be able to take the wall out, so. All lumber, wood lumber, not the engineered wood. Real wood lumber always has a natural crown to it. So when they mill it, the curvature of the board is what we call the crown. If you sight down the edge, you'll notice that the crown is either gonna be up or it's gonna be down, but every board has a natural crown. When looking at lumber and installing it, you always wanna kinda take in consideration the crown and which way it's going so that you can kinda, you know, Work around this. Isn't that right, David? 100%. In this case, we came out from the wall about 16 inches. And as you can see, we cut this drywall right halfway on this existing floor joist. And I'll show you why in a minute. Let's go tight against the drywall. Right there. Go ahead. Just need a couple nails to hold it up in place. Since it's a temporary shoring wall, it doesn't have to be in perfect condition, right? I'm coming off the existing framing and I'm measuring over to this edge right here, right? So it's about, I don't know, 11 and 3 eighths. As I follow that line down, I come off this existing sill plate, I'm gonna make a mark, 11 and 3 eighths. I'll do the same thing over here. That's the reference that we're gonna use to put the sill plate down. Now, when we measure our studs individually, you wanna make sure we step on the plate, right? Because it could be not sitting flat. We wanna step on the plate, what we call taping in our stud. So in this case, we've got 93 and 316. So I'll call that out to these guys. We'll move on to this one, same thing. Step on it. You wanna make sure that the studs that you put in are snug, not over tight, but snug. 316. So now what David will do is David will install it directly underneath here at the top, knock that into place. Once he gets it underneath there, he'll put one temporary nail or nail to hold it in place, and then he'll take the level, plumb it from top to bottom. We've got support under anything that's sitting on top of that wall. From this section over, we've got weight on that wall. Here is a little bit different. The joist runs from here to here. So as you can see in the ceiling, we've got the joists running this way that land on the wall, and then they change direction for whatever reason. Well, uh, the, since the, the, the joists are now landing on that wall, we don't have to be concerned so about shoring or holding up this section of the wall because there's no weight on it. The only weight that's really on it is this subfloor plywood here, which is gonna be carried by this, this joist right here, which we're not touching. So we only need to shore up what's landing on this wall, essentially. Everything else is changed direction and it's gonna support itself. All right, guys, looks like our shoring wall's all done. Come on through and take a look. We've got what we talked about, our top plate, okay? We've got our sill plate, temporary sill plate. And then we've got a vertical stud, temporary stud under every single joist. That is gonna ensure that when we take this section of wall out behind here, we've got temporary support. So the wall comes out, the floor doesn't come down. The most important thing here, guys, just to make sure that you've accounted for every single piece of lumber that is sitting on the wall, right, before you take it down. And we've done so by strategically placing support under every joist. So now this wall's ready. We're ready to move on to the next phase of the project, which would be removing the wall. Okay guys, so now that our wall is all shored up with the temporary wall, now it's time to demo. So I always use a cordless sozole. I cut the nails. Cut all the blocks. We'll remove all the studs first and we'll keep the post and the headers at the end. Cut out the plates, away from you. You don't want to cut this way, you cut your leg to cut away from you. OK, 
Okay, so now all our studs are removed. Now it's time to take the post out, which all the way, see that beam right here? That big beam is resting on top of the post. So we are going to take this and the header of the door opening. We have a shoring wall, it's not going anywhere. I'm just cutting this post in half, right? Because it's a little easier to kind of take it apart in two pieces. Nail sticking up, bend them over right away so nobody gets hurt, right? We don't want anybody stepping on the nail. The ultimate goal is to get a beam up in the floor to support the existing floor load. That's right. Thank you, John. Hey, no problem. As we're you know, nearing the complete demo of the wall, we start fine tuning, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and mark what goes out for these guys. This goes out. Now remember, we're gonna put a post, a four by six post, because the beam is five and a quarter or five and a half. The edge of the beam is gonna start basically right in line with this plate, and it's gonna go five and a half over. So I'm actually taking out this, all of this comes out. When I'm putting together uh, a corded tool, a lot of times we use cordless, but in this case, we're gonna use a corded uh, sawzall to kind of help speed up production. I like to try and tie, tie it together. So what I'll do is I'll link them, link them together, create a little knot, knot, so that when we're working around ladders, wood, it, that connection doesn't come loose. So it's kind of a, a little trick, a little trick to make sure that it stays. For what it's worth. See, we took out what we call a rim joist. The rim joist is where it sits flush with the outside edge of a plate. Is what these are, these are top plates. We've got this edge, we call that a rim joist. And as you can see, we removed this portion of the rim joist, but now we gotta continue on all the way to the end so that we could get that beam up and in. We're gonna snap a line from end to end, the thickness of where that beam is gonna sit inside the frame itself. I mark one side, I mark the other side. David's gonna hook a snap line, run it down to me. We're gonna snap it, and then that is our cut line for where we're going to cut our studs, our existing studs. I'm gonna snap it twice. Ready, Dave? Yeah. Cut line. Cut line. What we're doing in the process is we're determining where our beam is gonna go up into the floor above, right? So I had to basically transfer this inside plate line, which is the line of the studs up above, up to the plywood. From there, I snapped a line on each side, and you can see right here, that's our cut line. So we're gonna take a special tool called a multi-use tool. We're gonna cut through the plywood there, remove the plywood, and then the beam should be able to slot in, and then we'll reinforce that edge of the plywood with a, what we call a nailer after the fact, so. Okay guys, so um, as we're getting closer to the beam installation, right, the new structural beam that we're putting in to carry the weight of the floor is taller than our existing floor joists. Our existing floor joists, you can see here, are approximately nine and a half inches tall. Our new beam is 14 inches tall. So in order to successfully get it up into the floor without having any issues, we need to then cut this, this section of joist that was sitting on top of the plate, we need to cut it back so that the beam can go up in and we can put a hanger to the existing beam to the new post. I'm in the process right now of measuring back so that our beam can go up and in. I'm gonna cut this, take this out, and then our new beam will just fish right up and inside. So what do you think? I think it was very well explained. Okay, we're just working our way around. Cut the back side and then finish it up. Hey guys, okay, so we are almost done with the beam installation, right? But let's walk through the steps real quick of what we did, right Ben? We uh, installed the shoring wall, temporary shoring wall to support the existing floor load and the floor joist. Then, if you remember, there was a wall here before. We demoed out the wall. We dissected all the existing framing so that our beam has a nice pocket to set up into now. Basically, we are now ready to install the, post. uh, the posts and the beam. We're going to use a genie leaf to uh, leave the beam. Up. 
good? Yeah, this is kind of good. One of the most important things to do, guys, is remember upon installation of a beam or anything like this, where you have you know an uneven surface, is to make sure that everything's cleaned up ahead of time. So we took the time to make sure that we did a clean sweep, that nothing's going to be in our way, that we're working safe and smart, and uh, the beam goes up with no problem. It'll be exciting to see it all done. This is a support beam, a floor beam. We actually cut this beam back so that the new beam can go up in and we can place a hanger, a structural hanger, off of that existing beam onto the new one. These are what we call floor joists. So we've got our floor beam, floor joists, and this is our plywood subfloor underlayment, okay? So we had to make sure we cut all that out so that our new beam can go up and in. These portions of wood material that we cut off right here, these are called our stud framing, our wall framing. Now we're measuring the beam, guys. It's gonna be snug, and then we're taking off about a half inch to five eighths of an inch to allow for a little bit of play, right? Um, there's no reason for it to be super, super tight, but once we get it up into place, we wanna make sure we have some flexibility getting it in. Doing it this way, is it? Yeah, but we only have three people carrying it. Uh, no, I'm No, so I said, do you know I'm right? Watch them go through the door together, watch. <laughs> Don't do the brace the other way next time. Bad idea. Ah, David, good job. That was very good. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. One, two, three. Take a more. There you go. Okay, so now that we've got the beam in position, guys, we've got it kind of snug into the wall cavity where we want it. The genie lift is centered in the opening. We're gonna slowly crank the genie lift up and the beam's gonna go up into place. As we're doing this, we're checking both sides to make sure that we're not pinched or we're catching on any wires or anything like that. We've got the beam in place. As you can see, the beam is in place. It's being supported temporarily by the genie lift. Now we're taping in, measuring the parts. We're gonna cut the post, put the post in, and then we'll be able to take the genie lift out. So here, I'm measuring this first post. This is the one that goes up against the wall there. So now we're drilling a hole to be able to fish an existing wire through. Crowning it now to check the, the direction of the board. It looks like it's got a crown going this way, so I'll put the, the crown part up against the existing framing so we don't have an issue with getting it in. Now we should be good. <clears throat> In, we can try to make sure that everything's flush with the existing plate. And then we'll kind of work our way up and make sure that everything's flush, which it is. Very good. Now we'll go to the other side. Again, we want to make sure it's tight to the existing framing. That type of nail application there is called a toenail. And the reason why it's called toenail is because we're angling it down into the existing silk plate, okay? So we're toenailing down and in. All right. Okay. And we'll go up top. Now that we've 
we got our push in guys. Everything's secure. The beam has support on both ends. We can remove this genie lift, okay? It's not doing anything anymore. Cause we got our posts in, they're nailed off. Everything's ready to go here. Ben will start backing the genie lift down now and we can get it out of the way. Go this way like six inches. There you go, perfect. Now that we've uh, installed all of our hardware, um, let me explain what it is. So basically, we cut these beams back and these joists back to allow for this structural beam to go up into the floor. Now we had to go back and install what we call a hangers. They're metal hangers that attach to the new beam and then attach as well to the joists and the beams that are to remain. So once we've nailed up all these and installed these properly snug and fit to the framing members, we are now ready to go ahead and actually remove the shoring wall, the temporary wall support. Since we have positive support on every single wood member. So I went back and I made sure that everything's nailed up properly. Now I'm gonna take down this temporary shoring wall. We'll get a good idea of what the new space is gonna look like with the wall gone, so. All right, so now you can see temporary supports are gone, beams in place. We're gonna finish it up with some blocking and some straps, beams in, everything's secure, snug on each side. All the hardware's in. Now we just need to finish up the minor detail framing. We're all done. So the wall is gone and the beam is in. Just recap real quick on removing a structural wall and putting a structural header in in place of it. We installed a temporary shoring wall, right? Remember back in the beginning, we installed a temporary shoring wall to support the joists that were landing on the wall that was here before. Once that was in place, we took the wall out, demoed carefully, dissected all the existing framing, carefully pulled out everything, inserted, measured and inserted the big, huge structural beam that you see here post on each side, and then now we finish it off with strapping. So one day's worth of work, quick, easy way to remove a structural wall and install a big structural header. <laughs>